All right, and welcome back. Again, still working on the vertical stabilizer uh, since the last video. Um, still working on disassembly after having match drilled the skins to the skeleton of the vertical stabilizer. And so this process is just removing all the Clecos, taking all the pieces apart, and then uh, going through and again, like I discussed before, uh, deburring all of the sharp edges, including the uh, the uh, weight reduction holes, as I, I, I would call them, uh, inside the ribs. So you go through on all the edges, the flanges, the, the, the holes in the middle there, everything, and make sure there's no, no uh, sharp corners or sharp edges. And same thing for all the holes that you drilled through for match drilling. And that's what I'm doing here. <clears throat> So this is all still part of the first step in the instructions. Um, I don't recall the, the step number at the moment, but um, the first step is essentially all of the vertical stabilizer. And uh, what that is, for those who aren't uh, aviation enthusiasts, is the uh, vertical stabilizer is the part that the rudder attaches to. It's the uh, vertical fin, so to say. So it's the front end of the, of the tail. Uh, that, that sticks up um, and so that's what I'm constructing here um, so the instructions here talk about um, getting everything uh, deburred and, and ready and then it gives you the option if you want to prime and as I've discussed before that's something I've, I've kind of halfway uh, for and against in this in this case so here I'm going through and I've got a a drill bit that is a deburring tool um, and it just goes through and I do a real quick uh, pull of the trigger on, on the drill you don't want to remove too much uh, material you're not trying to chamfer uh, the the hole you're just trying to get rid of the the any sharp edges that may have been left over from the drilling process so it's just a real quick pull of the trigger each each time I uh, deburr a hole here and I'll go both sides of the uh, front and rear spars, and I, and you do both the outside and inside faces of each hole. So I'll go through twice uh, along each edge here. Um, I had to go order a extension piece to be able to get the interior side of each hole. Um, with the drill, it just you couldn't get into the uh, into the piece. And so I, I, I later uh, go back and, and do the interior surfaces of each hole. But I'll do this for, for each. Uh, this, oh, now it's the next day. Uh, going through, and, and I, the, uh, the uh, uh, grinder I have there, tabletop grinder that I have there, I've got a 3M uh, polishing wheel on one side. Uh, one is a grinding wheel, but on the right side is a polishing wheel. And it just removes a little bit of material to kind of round off each edge. And so I'll run each piece over uh, the polishing wheel to, to round off the edges that I can. And then I've got another tool that it, it basically cuts the metal and I'll run that on the interior holes of the ribs. Um, it's just a handle with a, a revolving metal cutter basically. Um, and you'll see me uh, run that through the holes on the interior of the ribs. Um, and it, again, it just cuts away a small amount, it shaves away a small amount of the material to kind of round it off. And with each pass, you kind of do a finger test just to make sure it's not sharp, doesn't draw blood, then you're good. And so you do that to all the parts here. And I built the the workbenches that I have here, I, I built all three of them uh, in my hangar that I had for a, little, a short little while. Um, they're all based off of the uh, EAA website uh, workbench. So I built two that are to the dimensions that they have and then this the bench that I have all of my uh, tabletop tools on, the drill press and whatnot. That one I just modified, made it a little smaller. Um, basically it was just leftover material that I had so I figured I might as well build a third uh, workbench and it works pretty well to have all of my tools on one one bench there and what I'm gonna end up doing is um, I'm going to attach a, um, 
uh, uh, outlet strip. Uh, I've got one, and I think it's like 10 or 15 plugs on the strip. Uh, I'm going to end up attaching that to uh, probably at least that one work desk, if not uh, the main one I'm working in front of here. Um, just to make it a little easier as I'm as I'm having to plug stuff up, you know, plug stuff in. You see all the cables and hoses that are going along the floor. I want to try to get rid of that and make it, a, you know, so I don't end up tripping on something and maybe damaging a piece. So here I'm. I'm uh, I've got a grinding wheel on my air tool um, um, that uh, I'm using along the edges also, just to get the inside of each of the flange edges. Um, the grinding wheel, the, the polishing wheel on the, on the uh, grinding is it's good for the outside edge of anything, but it's it's sometimes difficult to get the inside edge, so that's why I have this tool here. And as I go through all of this, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, again, just testing everything, and then here's that little tool that I was talking about. I'll just run that on the inside edge of all the circles, just to shave off just a little bit in the areas that I can't reach with the other tools um, to to smooth the edges. And then taking a um, it's a 3M uh, polishing pad, just to kind of finish do the final touches on everything. So you end up spending quite a bit of time on uh, deburring uh, all of the the surface uh, pieces. Um, again, it's it's probably a, a good 40, 50 percent of your time uh, is prep work. Um, in fact, majority of times prep work, and a good part of that is just simply sitting and deburring all of the pieces. Um, so. Like I said, this is only the first step of the entire instructions for the, the empennage kit, which is the tail section of the airplane. And uh, so far of all the videos that I've put out, um, it's all simply been on the vertical stabilizer so far. And it, I've probably now am sitting at, I would wager probably around 15 hours of work uh, toward the vertical stabilizer. Um, a lot of that is learning curve. Uh, first time doing the majority of this um, and then a lot of it is simply double checking what I think I understand the instructions to say and so as I go along I think the the process progress will will be faster and uh, these videos will be a little more a uh, little more entailed in each of these videos but this one is just going to be a lot of this, a lot of sitting here deburring, doing prep work, uh, getting everything ready to put primer. And with all this, like I said in an earlier video, I installed a stereo system, uh, a wireless speaker system for my phone. It makes the time go by a little better and uh, it kind of helps to pass things through. It, it, a, lot, a lot of people will have uh, earphones and, and things like that with a with an iPod or um, uh, in their phone, uh, Pandora or whatever. And so I just use it on the, on the uh, wireless speakers. So now I'm getting the brackets for the um, rudder hinge uh, attachment point on the bottom of the rear 
spar for the vertical stabilizer. Uh, earlier I had match drilled the existing holes. Um, I had discussed in a previous video that not all of the holes in the bracket itself are pre-drilled and I wasn't sure if I was supposed to drill them at this point or not. So I did a little more research, looked at some videos and uh, some pictures from other builders blogs and saw that I do need to in fact drill these. So I'm going through here and match drilling the, uh, the holes where they need to be and then uh, final drilling the, the uh, there's one hole that I had not done. And a lot of the process of building this airplane is going to be look at the instructions, see if you understand what they're talking about. And for the most part, they're pretty clear. Um, a lot of the mistakes I've made have been because I've made an assumption or I've gone out of step. And uh, that's something that you have to be able to do is, is go step by step and not jump ahead. Uh, that's caught me a, a time or two so far already. Um, but as I'm looking at something, if I don't understand it, then I will go on either on YouTube and look at some other videos of people building uh, the RV-14, or you can also just do a Google search for uh, RV build and uh, RV-14 build specifically, and you can find several blogs out there, and a lot of people will post their pictures and stuff, and you can compare the step that you're on and look for that part and see what they did. Um, and then also, of course, there's always uh, Vans technical assistance if you need that, you know, help from them, or even the Vans Aircraft or, or Vans, I'm sorry, uh, VansAirForce.com, the uh, website that was built for uh, builders to kind of get together and discuss different things. So there's a, a whole bunch of, of opportunities to get research done and make sure you're doing something the correct way. So here I'm getting everything, uh, the final touches of all the prep work done before getting ready to uh, apply primer. I uh, just got a few brackets to finish uh, deburring, and then uh, in the next video I'll be be ready to apply primer to the uh, to the pieces. So almost ready for final assembly. And with that, I'm gonna let this video run out. And again, I appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions or comments, by all means, please leave them down below. And uh, if you could, click that like button for me. It'll help me out with exposure to others who may be interested in building uh, an RV-14. Again, thanks for watching.